Ah, hello there and Bwana Yesu Asifiwe. It's so good to have you back yet one more time. Haribu Harvest Conversations. My name is Brian Mashigadi and we are so excited to be with you yet one more time on today with these amazing gentlemen that have come here with us for the last several episodes and we are still at it because Jude is a brother not on steroids but full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, here's somebody. <laughs> and it's so good to just be doing this together with these amazing people. Um, <laughs> this is one on steroids. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> listen to me. Upon the Holy Ghost power is the juice of life. Hallelujah. Cleanse with the blood <laughs> of the Lamb. All right. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Yes, you know, yeah. I just the joy of the Lord, you know, because I have accepted l'Evangile. I've accepted the gospel. Check. Yeah. The, yeah. Truly. So uh, with me in studio again, we have Pastor Jack hey. Kiarie. Yeah. Um, Barbara Ram. Come on. Mona. Yeah. Baba Ramona. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Buona Jin. Buona Jin. Correct. Mm. <laughs> Truly. And on the other hand, we have on the right hand of the <laughs> on the right hand, we have uh, Pastor Shad. Pastor Mbivi. Did you say pastor? Pastor Shad <laughs> Mwindi Mbithi. Mbithi. <laughs> All right. Pastor Mbithi. Pastor Mbithi. All right. It has that. Yeah. It, it that you know. kwenye ndani ya misuli. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mighty man of God. I'm um, hailing all the way from all the way down uh, the thicker roads. Uh, yeah. Baba Shani, Baba Shama, uh, Bwana Shi. Bwana Shi. Um, yeah. Pamoja, uh. Wana Mwita Mungu. Java Shama. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend. Hallelujah. It's so good to have these people <laughs> whoa, 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 in the house. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In the heels, in the house. If by now you haven't told people that we are on, you're slacking. Una slack and time is truly not on your side. I mean, because um, we don't have. I only fear that there's no time left to tell the world Come that on. there's no time left. <laughs> <laughs> Come on here, man. God, listen to me. Okay, uh, we've been doing contending for the faith. Yeah. yeah. And see, we have contended, and we continue to contend. Yeah. If you are just joining us, you can go back to the other videos and add them to your watch later to your playlist and watch some good <coughs> content. Sikila wakati kwa galia mabo abayo hayakujenki kwa jia yoyote hata sikiroho hata they are just negating your brain cells. Ina negate to. Look at some, you know, godly content, things that build you up yeah. in this most holy faith. faith. Come on, come on. We are preempting where we are going. <laughs> and so last time when we were finishing, yeah. we finished at uh, the false teachers and, you know, uh, who are the false teachers and why are they false teachers? And we looked at them. And, um, you know, the question that uh, keeps coming through is, how do I know these false teachers? Yeah. How do I identify these false teachers? Mm. Because the false teachers were there in the days of June. Jude mm. to June. Okay, at June, <laughs> 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 in the days of Jude, they were there. <laughs> Uko ma 60 to 70, 85 but, but, AD. But yeah. who's June? June is... Should we know something? Is what, who's June? A member in our youth ministry. Who loves the Lord truly? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, June. Nyawera. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you Sharaps. just do that? Sharaps from the pastors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Hi, June. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Yes. June. This is yeah. All the way University of Embu to Nakwenda. God bless. Yeah. 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 That's how you stare a conversation. Let me just tell you. Afadhali uache Mungu wa kunini akufanye kitu. Man yule kwa God. Binadamu akikuinua eh wanaweza kuweka chini. But God lakini Mungu akikuinua ukinuliwa na mwanadamu. Mwanadamu atakuweka chini. Ukinuliwa na mwanadamu. Mwanadamu atakuweka chini. Ya mwanadamu. Ah, I love it. Anyway, 
Oh. My director is screaming in my ears, <laughs> <laughs> saying, move it along. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, we've said in the book of Jude, we just allow the Lord to lead us. You know, just allow the Lord to take reins of the conversation, you know. Yeah. So yeah. we're looking at how. The question that's been coming across is, how do I know the false teachers? Because yeah. we said they, be, they were there in the days of Jude. Uh, they are even right now in our day and age. And it's possible for you and I to easily become false teachers as well. Yeah. So how do we identify them? We said at the beginning, if it, works like, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it is a duck. So yeah. we'll know them by their practice and their characteristics and some of the things we do. And so, as always, I'm going to throw the question right here. Um, Shad looks like he's about ready to yeah. get us started. Yeah. So um, maybe even just Jude tells us to be wary of them. Uh, are there other places in scripture where we could find our answer? Yeah. How do the false teachers yeah. look like? Yeah. Um, I think Jack had read for us uh, scripture in the book of Matthew. Yes, um, Matthew 7. Yeah, yeah, Jesus saying that you will know them by their fruits. But I want to read um, 1 Timothy chapter 6 uh, from verse 3. It says, Teach and urge these things. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. So just there in verse, one, in, in verse 3, we get to learn that number one, the false teacher teaches a different doctrine. That a different doctrine from that which was taught by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, then, another ah, thing, and that, that is the heretic. The one who teaches a different doctrine is the heretic. And then, number two, um, he says, verse four, he says he's puffed up with, con with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, and slander, and evil suspicions. Um, this is called the divider. He, so anyone that has an uh, unhealthy desire, unhealthy craving, for controversies and quarrels and, and works to divide the church. And I think the reason why we have so many split ups in the churches, just people who are there to divide uh, the body of Christ. That's also a characteristic, a, a characteristic of a false teacher. Verse um, 5 would say, in constant friction among people who had who, who are hey, hey, cucumber? <laughs> who? <laughs> who, are? <laughs> who are deprived in mind and deprived of truth, um, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. The charlatan, he is yep. there for the gains. You will know a false teacher if they do it for the gains. And Jude would actually say, <clears throat> what, and, and give this example with Balaam, what Balaam did. He was there for the gains. Um, and then um, verse 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and we cannot take anything out of this world. Then goes on to say, if we have food and clothing, uh, with this we should be content. Um, and so we've said that number one, he he preaches a different doctrine. That is called the heretic. And then there's the divider who has um, a desire, a healthy desire and craving for for conspiracies and brings division among men. And then <clears throat> we've talked about the one who's there, the charlatan, who's there for um, the profit, for the gain, yes. And then Timothy would also continue and talk about him who's the abuser, he who takes advantage of weaker people and praise 
like a lion on them. And so if anyone has that, 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 those characters, if you look at anyone from um, just your um, group of people that you listen to and they have those um, characteristics, then I think they, sh they are false teachers. And then there's um, the false prophet who says things and they never ever happen. Uh, they keep saying the Lord says, but nothing, nothing ever happens. And, 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 and the book of Thessalonians would say then, judge the prophecy by the Spirit, you know? Yeah. Just judge by the Spirit and you will see. And then, them that their conduct and their creed do not agree, that's also a false teacher. Yeah, yeah they, they talk about things that they don't do believe they are found in scandals and skirmishes and issues as also a false teacher. So um, maybe just to mention them very fast for people to follow. Number one, there's the deceiver, there's the charlatan, there's the heretic, there's the speculator or the divider. He was there just to divide and and then there's the false prophet. Yeah, yeah false prophet who just says things and they don't really ever come. Yeah. In the previous, in the previous sessions, you had mentioned um, uh, a posit just the previous one, actually, the one you called the tickler, was it? Oh, the tickler, the tickler yeah. yeah. So the tickler is one who says things to please people. Yeah, he wants to pretend to be like a chapati. You know, it's, it's chapatis that will always make people happy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just loves them. But a, a friend of mine was telling me that you can't be, you can't profess the gospel and not be offensive. The gospel by itself is offensive. offensive so if message. you yeah. preach it for what it is, you will not be okay with everyone. So the tickler works to please a people's pleaser. Yeah. And I know if you go online and just look at whatever is happening, you will get to see these people and how they fall in whatever descriptions that we've given here or the Bible talks about. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm actually um, interested in two, two, two of those groups okay. because they are the profound ones. They are the ones who are inside our congregations and they are the ones who are doing ministry so much mm -hmm. in our generation. Let me start with the last one, the titular, mm -hmm. that he is there to please people. <clears throat> and um, I'm scared that today's sermon has turned into a comedy that has Jesus in it, oh. has turned into a show that has salvation and the cross in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really scared for that kind of a of a, of, a, of a church yeah. that um, we want to be there so that people can see, can, can, can be excited. And we have formed mega churches out of that kind of a thing. Yeah. People are, there are people who are naturally gifted mm -hmm. in humor. speaking and, and humor. You mm -hmm. captivate people. Mm -hmm. like, and, and sometimes it, it might not even be humor. Mm -hmm. There are those guys who are just orators. Yeah. And by their orator skills, they captivate people. And they're like, ah, wow, I'd want to come back next Sunday to hear what this guy wants to say. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul talks to Timothy about. Mm -hmm. These guys who are eager to hear uh, what, they're, what, what itching. they're itching ears, what they, they draw to themselves speakers yeah. and people who uh, give them what they're itching ears want Not to too. hear. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm, I'm really... That's what we have, especially this yeah, generation. Yeah. And of course, at the back end of it, he, he looks like uh, someone who wants to please the crowd. At the back end of it, it's the crowds that, he's, that he, is, um, he wants to amass. He actually like, feeds from the crowd. He feeds from it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Paul would actually say in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that when I, ca when I came to you guys, I did not come with... With, um, uh, with eloquence, eloquence and plausible and, words. And even, even wisdom yeah, of this world. My own wisdom, yes. but I came with mm. just simple. He came with a simple gospel and a demonstration of the of spirit. The power of the yes. spirit. The cross, Christ crucified, and the power of the spirit. Yes. And I think that's sufficient gospel. 
yeah. Yeah, so, so that uh, it's not about the orator or my speaking skills. I mean, it's about how him, how we speak about him. And this has nothing to do with, my, with anyone who's gifted yeah. and eloquence. I, I believe that preaching is a public skill, so we should desire to grow in the skill. Yeah. But man, if my pastor is a stammer and he handles the word of God well, ah, man, I'd, I'd rather sit under that man to hear Absolutely. the depth of the word of God than to sit with someone who just seeks to please everyone yeah. but never communicates the gospel. Absolutely. Um, allow me to just jump in on yeah. that while we're still talking about identifying or being able to know types even from scripture. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a common question that comes through, um, especially for young believers yeah. in this day, that you attend a service and you leave feeling so confused mm. or really, really condemned because mm. you feel like you're not you don't even know what the speaker was talking about. Yes. So you attend a service <laughs> and every time, by the time you're leaving, it feels like you need to, and it's not that you haven't read your Bible. Yeah. You just, it's just been explained in what Pastor Jack was, called, was calling the Greek lexicon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you almost feel like to understand what, my, what this preacher was saying, I need to go and enroll mm. in school mm. and study the Greek language mm. so that I can come and understand. While there's nothing, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, mm. with you wanting to, you know, understand uh, to go back to school and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, should we, would we be wrong in placing that under one of the categories of the false yeah. teachers? You know, yeah. somebody who makes it more complicated yeah. Yeah. While I think it should yeah. be the opposite. Yeah. I, I, See, I, I, yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul would actually say in the book of uh, First Timothy chapter six, the one that we've just read, the guy who's um, has an healthy craving for for conspiracies mm. and myths, yeah. godless chatter, they will try and, co and, and and I've found this with so many of. Uh, those guys that really are false in some way, they will pay so much attention on the minor to build on something that will promote what they want to sell to us. So they'll talk about, oh, the Greek, the root word for this, the Greek word for this, and try and change because not everyone will go and check what the Greek word is really after a sermon. So they use their eloquence and knowledge to confuse everyone who's listening to them so that at the end of the sermon they will draw them to the point that they wanted to make, which is not necessarily biblical. I personally believe that if the preacher should make the word of God so understandable for everyone who's listening, so that not to, com to com confuse and complicate it. But these guys, the speculators and the dividers, what they do is they will talk about so many things that they have zero understanding about and try to justify things. Um, there's, there's a preacher I once listened to. Um, he was saying that when you are poor, you're not even respected in heaven. And he gives an example and says that when Lazarus um, was sick and sitting under the table, the table of the rich the, man, the, yeah. and eating food that fell from the table, th this disrespect continues until when he's in heaven, the rich man sends Abraham, tells Ab Abraham, tell the tell Lazarus to dip his finger and just drop some water on my tongue. Like he says, the, the, the poor have no respect even in heaven. Like someone who's in hell would send someone who's in heaven to do something for them because the guy was just poor. <laughs> And you see how he extrapolates the entire point. 
Because that's not even the point of that text. <laughs> the point is far. It, it's, it's far from. But because he has what he wanted to communicate, he will use whatever thing to justify. And so he went on to preach and say, oh, you can't be, re you can't be poor. You shouldn't be poor. The poverty Lord doesn't. Disease. Poverty is a disease. It's from the enemy. Jesus and died in poverty so that we can to, become rich. Yeah. To, to, he told us to rise up and shout and call money and guys are screaming on top of their voices calling for money. Yeah. Chad, at the end of the day, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a signature move, at the end of the day, at the end of the sermon, yeah. you will go back to your wallet yeah. most of the time. Yeah. You will. Maybe to pay for something. No. I'm <laughs> saying, and there, realize it has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there will be an altar call. Mo yeah. Oh yeah, time, actually most yes. of the time there will be an altar You will call. be told to connect with yes. connect with the man of God, connect with the anointing in the area. And guys will give. Ah, my goodness. And they will connect with their Let me get onto that just for a bit. I know it's a really tricky Subject, controversial yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Um but just uh in trying to do what Jude is talking about contending for the faith. What would that then mean for somebody who wants to um, connect, connect, <laughs> but came to the service and they really that word was really for them. They it they really got, but they really don't have the money. Now that's you see that's the problem. <sighs> but again, another thing: if you have listened to that scripture, that word preached, mm. and you want to connect, mm. then there's already a problem. You can't even <laughs> contend for the faith. You, you, you won't contend. Because, because <laughs> the seed... You see, see the, the problem. See, see <laughs> that again is, 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 is the seed, of the, the, the issue of the seed yeah. that is being planted. Um, and the seed is the word of God. I'm, I'm talking about the parable yeah, of the yeah, soul yeah. and all that. The seed is the word of God. And Jesus profoundly says, if you do what I have commanded you, yeah, it's the seed that has fallen. Yeah. And how do you, let me use that word, connect. I don't like using it. Yeah. The way you connect to the seed that has been planted into your life is obedience. Is doing. Is obedience. It's actually obedience. It's obedience. Kukusa <laughs> miguza. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's actually what you do after, uh, after, after. this church service. Yeah. You know? Interestingly, is people have been lied to to think that we can do these things physically we we want to we want, you see the, pro, the the scene that the children of israel had when they rejected god, god as and their wanted king, a king and yes. wanted a physical king that's the problem every time we want something that we can connect to we want something that is tangible give us our something faith, yes give us someone who we can see yeah, yeah. our faith our, our faith is on what we see but paul would actually ask why would you hope for something that you see and i believe then that the only way to contend and live right is to obey this scripture you know just as simple as it is some of us don't actually think that the bible is literal you know that you can read this word and just take it for what it is that the the there is there the the comma is a comma someone will tell us that that comma now that comma there is a is is, is a dispensation it talks about time and they will explain how that is time. I was actually told that in the beginning was not the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> there, but, was, there was the beginning, beginning. There was the beginning where God was. And he extrapolated. My goodness, it was a whole sermon. And he said, you see, you cannot be in the beginning if you are the one who is doing the beginning. Ah. And so the, I'm actually using the tone he used. And so the beginning had to be there before the beginning in Genesis 1.1. And, and, and he went on and on and on and on and was like, what? And you could see the young, especially the young people. They you are see excited them. They are taking and notes. jumping they and all erratic. Yeah, come on, beginning, begin again, <laughs> begin some more, begin two, three, four times. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. It's I'm, I'm, 
wow, it's, you guys have been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you can begin again today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen to me when I tell me. you. It's a beginning, <laughs> truly. Um, it's, it's, it's very, um, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth to think, and I think we talked about this in a previous episode, yeah. that there are people out there who would actually want to pray on the children of God. Like, and they, we are unsuspecting, these children of God, mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. We are just unsuspecting And the reason, I think we said that in the introduction, I think, um, the reason why these teachers are dangerous is because they have crept in unnoticed. Mm. So we are unsuspecting. Like we said, they do not announce themselves. They do not come saying, I am the thief. But Jesus reveals them to us by saying, the thief comes to do those things. He steals and kills and destroys. That's how you know the thief. So just... The simplicity of God's word, I think, is underrated. We don't talk about it enough. Yes. We want to make it so. I, there's a statement that Pastor Shad said early in the previous episodes about the word of God being so shallow that a child can swim in yeah. and so deep that theologians still cannot get to the depth, to the, depths of it. to the very depths of it. And I think that's really profound about the word of God. As we are looking at the characteristics of false teachers, remember we said also earlier, but these false teachers will not come to you boldly and say, I am lying to you. Just the same with the enemy. The, the, the serpent did not appear in the, in the, in the, the garden. garden and said, I want you guys to just us up and left this place. No. He comes and says, did God really say that you yeah. shall die? And he said, but you shall not die the death. <laughs> There's a translation called Dewey Rames. And it says, you shall not die the death. You shall die, but not the death. I mean, you shall not surely die. It says, when, when the instruction is being given to Adam, God is saying, you shall surely die. Yeah. But then this one says to them, you shall not, I mean, surely, surely die. You shall not die surely. Yeah. <laughs> you shall die, but yeah. not surely. Yeah. I mean, he will, it's those half-truths and those lies and just, you know, that should you actually try to even confront the false teachers, it's very easy for them to come around and you are thinking, and so he says, the place, therefore, I think we, we would like to begin to land it here. The place with the false teachers is not to confront them. Mm-hmm. It's to contend mm-hmm. for the faith. I think yeah. the, the, the place true. that we are not so crazy about, we are not, our, our preoccupation, there's a place for confrontation, yeah. I think, but our preoccupation is not to confront, to go about confronting false teachers. Mm-hmm. But you're not filled in all their live services on Facebook writing, you false teacher, yeah. heretic, or whatever, because their followers will drown you out. Yeah. And oh, yes. you will die the death. Yeah. <laughs> but our responsibility as believers then is to contend for the faith. Yes. To go back to that one place of sanctifying the Lord in our hearts as Lord and Savior. I think right. that's the place for the believer. So as we, as we, as we wrap this up, I want us to um, and I'm going to, 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 to request you, Pastor Shad, to, to pray for that person who is going to be okay. joining us. Okay. And the, the thing in their heart right now is that they, are, they realize the local church they are plugged into has a false doctrine mm. or a false teacher. Mm. We are not ignorant of the fact that that's not an easy place to be. Yeah especially if you've been raised and brought up in that place. You don't know another place. And now in reading through scripture, maybe you realized it through watching this or maybe even way before this, the Lord had begun to open your eyes. And now you're in that place. You don't know what next. Where do I, so now what do I do? Where do I go? I'd like you to pray for that person and that that the Lord will help them navigate this seeming endless darkness or this place of deep confusion. Because they are there and they realize hey, where I am is not, is not the right place. But where do I go? Okay. Um, when you've been brought up in a certain place and then you grow up and you realize that place is not right. And living is not so easy. Yeah. Especially if you're, the son of the, you're a son of the house and maybe you've been taught a certain way. And you, yeah. you, 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 you know, we might be speaking from a place of, I don't know, privilege maybe yeah, because yeah. maybe where you are maybe you're plugged in is you know teaches sound doctrine yeah. and you know the prophet is not a false prophet yeah. he truly loves the lord jesus and is a follower and you know but there are other people many other people out there who struggle with that do you pray for someone like okay. that let's pray 
master you say that you are the good shepherd and lord you would leave the 99 to go in search for that one um and lord how i pray for anyone who's listening to us and lord is in a space where they are confused um what has been shared uh throughout the episodes has just been wrecking what they thought they believed and they are in a crisis of faith i ask that holy spirit of god you who convicts men may you convict them to that which is true may you help them to subject themselves to the authority of the word of god i pray that lord you give them a desire a desire for truth oh lord and that jesus christ you will help them to find peace uh the bible tells us that you do not give us the spirit of fear but the spirit of love and sound mind i speak and ask of you oh lord may you help them to find peace peace in the knowledge of this truth them that are confused and have realized that their local church or the place where they uh called home is not healthy for them i ask that you will give them boldness to stand out and be different and even live and get to a place where they will be fed right lord if there is any of the people who's listening to us who's um shepherd lord how i ask that you will break their hearts to the point of realizing men that they will be judged harshly if they do not live in accordance to what you've decreed and lord may you help them to be humble enough to acknowledge that they were wrong and want to live a life that is different Lord I pray for any one of us who's in a place of confusion I ask that you who orders our thoughts and our steps may you help these friends to get footing and grounding and that this word that we have been professing throughout the se- the, the episodes that have been aired oh Lord will find fertile ground and it will grow bearing 64 a hundredfold for the glory and honor of your name we bless you and we give you all the glory for it is in Jesus name we pray and we believe amen 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 thank you so much guys uh for being with us to this end thank you pastor shard and pastor jack yeah. god our bless um guys if you're out there and you're struggling you're in that place and that prayer was for you if you'd like some help navigating through this season you could reach out to the numbers on your screen and we'd love to walk this journey together with you to the glory of god the father continue to send us your questions if you are in a place you're like not sure about uh anything that has been said or there's an area you feel we haven't covered we'd like to be able to round up again uh for this also continue to invite your friends and let them know that we are doing this because the more of us that get to know about contending for the faith the better it is for this generation of yeah. ours and for the growth of the kingdom all right we're just about done uh but see you again next week God bless. God bless.